I've got a simple Godot project here from a past screencast video where the health decreases when you press the space bar just to show off health bars. And while this video is not about health bars, this video is about project settings in Godot and having a project set up already makes it a little easier to illustrate. When you go to project and project settings in Godot, you're greeted with a comprehensive list and guide to all the settings that are available for your project. This can be quite overwhelming at first, so I thought this video would be nice to walk you through what these do and focus on some of the most important ones that I've come across so far. So we'll just start right at the beginning, application config name. This is what's displayed in your game when you run it. So I just changed it and I added a space and now you can see up here in the title bar, it's Godot health bars. And when I alt tab, well, if I exported it and I alt tab, this changes the display of the application. So that would be the name of your game and you would wanna name it accordingly. Description is used um, mostly it seems like it's for the Godot project manager when you launch Godot. It just describes it more. So I don't usually set that. It doesn't seem like it's used anywhere else. Icon set your game icon. It defaults to the Godot robot. But uh, if you changed it to your own SVG icon, that's what would show up when you run your game. And that's important for PC games that uh, you need that. So that's how you would set that. You would just drag your SVG into here. And, uh, you know, I actually have an SVG probably here. Here's a floppy disk SVG. I'll just import that. Go to project settings. We'll quick load it. Close it. Now if we run the game, instead of seeing the Godot robot, the game application icon is this font awesome floppy disk icon. So that's how you change your project icon. Run is just sets the main scene that runs when your game boots. This would all, most often be like your main menu or just right into gameplay. Or maybe you have a credit splash screen if that's something you need. And you can just change that by going and browsing and finding it. It defaults to the first one you run, it prompts and asks you. Background color is what's shown surrounding your game. So like, or the boot splash, sorry. So this background color. So like if we change that, um, to a different color, like we'll make it a sort of green color and we run our game. There's a lot of running and quitting. You can change that. That can give it a little bit of feel while still calling out Godot and that's kind of nice. Um, you can also just like turn off the Godot splash image while it boots if that's something you want. Um, so we can go ahead and close that and now you'll just see that color while it loads up and then uh, you don't have the Godot icon, but it's kind of nice, I think, to let people know it was made with Godot if that's something you want. Window, this is pretty important. This is kind of the impetus for the video. So if we made this 640 by 480 and we close it, now the size of our game window changes. This can be really nice based upon what kind of game you're making. Um, and um, yeah, maybe you want it smaller because it's on the web or maybe it's like a retro game and you want it to be a lower resolution for some reason when it launches. And then you can also change how it launches. So this does full screen, non-exclusive, so you can alt tab and it doesn't change the resolution much. Um, for PC games, I think that makes a lot of sense, but you know, based, it's based on your needs. So yeah, I think Windows is also nice. You can also say where it gets positioned initially. So like we could set it in zero, zero. Absolute, it's gonna, maybe that's the center of the screen. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't messed with that much. But anyway, um, and you can say, you know, launch it to the other screen. That can be useful while you're developing. Um, and you can change that here. Resizable is nice. You can make it so your game can't be resized, but you probably do want it to be resized. Borderless is, um, I think it gets away from the like, yeah, you don't have the decorative window management. Pretty sure you'd want that though, especially if you're launching windowed. So don't do that much. But here's another important one, which is stretch mode. So you may have noticed that when I resize the window here, see this area? That's like, you know, represents this area over here in the 2D scene editor. But I really don't want that to be present. I just want 
the game to scale with the window size because we don't want more of the like scene view to be visible, at least most of the time not. So you can go ahead and let's hover over this and just doesn't have a description, but if we change it to viewport keep and then we run our game and we resize it, see those black bars? It's not showing more of the 2D viewport. It's scaling our game accordingly. So no matter how big you make the window, it maintains the aspect ratio of your window. And um, for pixel art games in particular and certain 2D games, that, you know, is probably what you want. And there's more settings here, like keep width will maintain the width of the game, but the height will change. So you can see here, like, we get this area down here, but it maintains the width up there. You can make it big. And then if it gets too wide, you get the black bars, but this would like show more of the down area. That could be nice for phones because like phones have different um, heights if you made a vertical game. And um, so that's uh, quite, quite good to know. And you can set the scale of your game. Like let's say our game was, yeah, we'll make it that, but we'll scale it at 1.5 and we'll just keep both of them. Now it'll launch zoomed into our world like into our scene here so this is the edge of the health bar it's kind of weird it doesn't make your window two times bigger it just zooms in on your game and, um haven't messed around with that too much but it could be useful and then for handheld games like if you made it for phones you could set it landscape or portrait accordingly you can set the v-sync mode that's to help with um to prevent screen tearing and some other things um so Usually just keep that as a default. You can set a custom mouse cursor if you want there. Haven't messed around with too much of this stuff. Um, texture filter, this is really helpful. If you're using a pixel art game, you probably want to change it to nearest. That'll make it scale really nicely. Linear is more for like painterly scaling. And um, yeah, so if you're using pixel art, you come into this project setting and change it to nearest. And then every time you import an image into your project, it'll have this default filter applied, which is what you want. Um, so that depends. Rendering mode is set sort of similar to the renderer you choose when you create your project. Then you could change it for f phones and web, it seems like. So um, that's cool, I haven't done that too much. Uh, Anti-aliasing is um, settings. I think they affect 3D. I don't know if they affect 2D, not too much there. Physics, you can set the gravity and you can set um, some common settings in your game, like how many physics ticks and those sorts of things. And then you could then change those with code if you needed. There's settings for XR and um, things for that. You can change your layers and the names for physics layers and stuff. This is quite helpful, especially as your games get more complex and uh, you can turn on Blender importing. So that's project settings to the basics. Just really wanted to show you the ones I use a lot. There's advanced settings too. So we didn't even get into them, but, um, you know, it really, there's really a lot, lot to it. I haven't really gotten into these advanced settings too much. There is a setting that I do change from time to time called, it's about the DPI. And I think that it's only visible, it's, it's an advanced settings. So if you go advanced settings, allow high DPI. If you're on certain platforms, you might have a monitor that has like, you know, two X the pixels of its resolution and it makes text text look really crisp. So you can turn that off and now you see the windows bigger, but the text is a little blurry. For a pixel art game, that doesn't matter because it's gonna scale nicely. But um, for certain games and for certain people, you might prefer to have the high DPI on. I'll launch that again so you see the differences. So that's that, that's the project settings. And we go in here, input map, covered in other videos. Haven't gotten into translation and localization yet. I'd like to in the future. Auto load is for global constants, which is a different concept entirely. Plugins is for adding plugins, which I haven't done yet. And um, don't know much about the import defaults. But for your general project settings, those are the main ones. Uh, I'd suggest reading the docs on certain ones if you want to learn more. But um, hopefully what I covered helps and covers the basis. Um, something nice is that when you do change the resolution of the game, in the 2D viewport, it shows you 
this blue line, it might be pretty thin. Let me try to zoom in. This blue line is what the resolution of the game is. And it's quite helpful to um, see that while you're working on your game. So like, since we changed it to be that new resolution, let's drag this over. We'll move our color rectangle to approximately fit. Now, if we launch the game again, you'll see that that's more centered and uh, is there. Those are the basic Godot project settings. That stuff was super overwhelming when I started. Hopefully this makes it a little less overwhelming for you to see the most important ones and how to change them. All right, thanks.